morning. Greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being, and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 32 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like acne, psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis, and while some folks may call that a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health, nutrition, prescription drugs, if you want to wean yourself off your meds and get on a good nutritional supplement program, if you have a health challenge that you or a loved one may be dealing with and you'd like help with it, if you have questions about ingredients or formulations or a common or success story, we are here for you. We welcome your calls at 844-236-6010. We love hearing from you. 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products that you hear advertised or recommended, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, our Truth Biomimetic Mineral Mist, our Truth Retinol 1% Shell and 5% Shell, Truth Transdermal C Serum, Truth Transdermal C Balm, and our Truth Omega-6 Healing Cream are all up at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with problem skin of any kind, traumatized skin, rashy skin, acne blemishes, Truth Treatments are based in vitamin C and vitamin A, the two go-to active ingredients for the skin. And we don't use preservatives or fillers or waxes or thickeners or water or silicone or nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want ever in our Truth Treatment products. They're all up at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com, and keep your eyes peeled for our new Truth Peppermint Salicylic Cleansers Cleanser and our new Hyaluronic Honey Cleanser. Both should be out, I'm guessing, next week. Check our yeah, keep checking back on the website. Should be I think Monday or Tuesday that they should be out. And also our connective tissue repair complex, our collagen repair complex, should be out next week as well. And you can find out all about our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com. Okay, we are talking about fats. I love talking about fats because they're so misunderstood. The mission of of this program is to clear up mythology, and we still don't have, uh, we're still living in the world of myth when it comes to our understanding or lack of understanding of fats. Three kinds of fats, as as we said yesterday, the phospholipids and cholesterol, and I... I should probably talk more about the phospholipids and cholesterol, but I talk about them all the time. Sometimes I feel like people get bored hearing about the same thing all the time. But the fact of the matter is, is that phospholipids and cholesterol and triglycerides are so darn important that uh, repetition is reinforcement. And it really, and plus we're going against a lot of silliness in the world of nutrition about these subjects, specifically about fats and, and triglycerides and cholesterol for that matter that uh, it just it seems to me like it's valuable to keep repeating re- repeating myself and repeating these ideas so phospholipids found in eggs found in wheat germ found in uh, legumes phospholipids are important for the brain they're important for the nervous system lecithin is the classic example of a phospholipid lecithin is actually a complex of phospholipids lecithin is also is well known as being important for the digestive system phospholipids are made up of uh, phosphorus, obviously, phospho for phosphorus. Phosphorus is a very explosive stuff. Phosphorus makes fireworks. Phosphorus burns are notoriously um, horrible, and they use them in, in, in chemical warfare. Phosphorus it means the bearer of light in Latin, which is interesting because uh, there is a certain light aspect to our nervous system, which is run on phospholipids, partially at least on phospholipids. 
our nervous system emits light. It's a fiber optic system, uh, uh, a, a light, I guess, like, like one of those light fiber optic systems where they transmit light over fibers. That's basically, that's, that's what our nervous system is. It's, it's, uses light as energy, biophotons, and those biophotons are the result of the actions of phospholipids. Eggs, 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 eat your eggs, nature's best source of phospholipids. Then there's cholesterol, obviously. I'm like, dude, <laughs> that is so massively important, cholesterol. It, I, it, unspeakably valuable in the body. The single most important molecule in animal life, in all of animal life, period, end of story. That case could be made for other ones, I, I, I know, but in my opinion, it's it, all about cholesterol. Animal life is all about cholesterol as opposed to plant life. And then there's the other, third kind of fats, the triglycerides. The triglycerides come in three lengths, three sizes, medium, small, and large, medium, or small, medium, and large, small chain. They call them small chain triglycerides, medium chain triglycerides, long chain triglycerides. The long ones, those are the ones we think about when we talk about our blood triglycerides. Chemists refer to two kinds of triglycerides, saturated triglycerides and unsaturated, which basically means liquid and fat. The two most important are the, the solid triglycerides in the body are stearic acid and palmitic acid, which I know a lot about because not only are they important for biology, they're also for the body or for the inside of the body. They're also important for the outside of the body because they are main fats in skincare products. Stearic acid is ubiquitous in lotions and creams. Palmitic acid is also, but not, not as palmitic acid. You'll see it as isopropyl palmitate or retinyl palmitate. You'll see it as palmitate. They're wonderful fats for the skin for a couple reasons. Number one, they're an inherent part of the skin. And I was like using ingredients. When I'm formulating a skincare product, I'm looking to use ingredients that are already in the skin. If you formulate with ingredients that are already in the skin, you minimize the risk of allergenicity, of allergies and toxicity. So stearic acid and palmitic acid are their ideal uh, uh, skincare ingredients in the sense that they're already in the skin. They don't do much for the skin on their own. So stearic acid is basically a thickener. And palmitic acid is kind of a carrier. So on their own, they don't do much. Palmitic acid, when it's attached to vitamin A, can help vitamin A work better. When it's attached to vitamin C, it can help vitamin C work better. In fact, it's very significant when it's attached to vitamin C because vitamin C is ordinarily water-soluble. So vitamin C doesn't really penetrate through, through the skin very well. So if you see ascorbic acid in your skincare products, I know many of you guys are hip to vitamin C for the skin which is kind of interesting because I couldn't have said that 10 or 15 years ago, but today everybody's hip to vitamin C. How important vitamin C is for the skin topically as well as internally. Unfortunately, many of you are also using ascorbic acid as your source of vitamin C, as your form of vitamin C for, uh, uh, for putting in your topical skincare products for getting into your skin. Well, guess what? It isn't doing much because it's sitting on the outside of the skin because the skin is a barrier to ascorbic acid. It's a wall to ascorbic acid. So if you're using a vitamin C product and it has ascorbic acid in it, you're not doing your skin much good. But if you take the palmitic acid, the fatty acid, the saturated fatty acid, triglyceride, or fatty acid, we'll say. Triglycerides, by the way, carry fatty acids. They're not fatty acids necessarily. They're, they're carriers for fatty acids. They're, they're they're, uh, they've got three fatty, tri meaning three, they have three fatty acids, and one of them is palmitic acid. Anyway, you take palmitic acid, you stick it on your vitamin C, boom, you got yourself a transdermal carrier for vitamin C. The palmitic acid gets pulled in, the skin says, hey, I know who you are, pulls in that palmitic acid, the vitamin C makes it through, sneaks in through, piggybacks through, and that's how ascorbyl palmitate works. And that's how ascorbyl tetraiso palmitate works. And those are the two best kinds of vitamin C. That's what you want to look for. Oh, where do you find them? Truthtreatments.com. All our vitamin C, that's what I use. That's my form of vitamin C. So palmitic acid, uh, esteric acid, these are saturated fats. They're solid. They're less oily than the uh, unsaturated fats, which we refer to as oils. Most dietary fats, when we think of dietary fats, we think of oils. Most of the dietary fats that we get uh, in our uh, in the standard American diet, the SAD, are oils, but not good oils, yucky oils, and that's a big problem. We'll talk about that when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll return after this. We are back on 
the bright side, pharmacist Ben on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific and 10 to 11 Central Time, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com, benfuchsarchives.com. You can search both websites, brightsideben.com and benfuchsarchives.com. There's seven plus years of archives, archived information, lots of good stuff that we've been talking about. We have covered so much stuff over seven and a half years. If you've been listening, I, I don't know how many people have been listening that long, but uh, I try to pack every show with information. And you can just imagine seven and a half years of information. You get a college education in nutrition, a better than a college education in nutrition, just by uh, listening to the archives. You can also purchase your longevity products at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. And you can sign up to join the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com. Or you can call 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. So three kinds of fats, cholesterol, phospholipids, triglycerides. When we talk about our body fat, that's triglycerides. The body uses triglycerides as its a storage form of fat. Triglycerides are what go into fat cells. And if you're, uh, if you're uh, carrying more body fat than you like, it's because of number one, you've got the, the amount of fat cells that you've got, although those are dictated at birth. It's not like you get extra fat cells. But what does happen is fat cells fill up like a balloon with triglycerides. And guess what? The main source of triglycerides is not dietary fat. That is not the main source of triglycerides in our body or in, or in fat cells. Where do you think the main source of triglycerides are that make us fat? Sugar. Yes, sugar. That's why this low-fat craziness, the, the, which thankfully is fading, but for decades, this idea that you get fat by eating fat it just fly, it was bad biochemistry. Now, certainly eating the wrong kinds of fat is not a good idea. And eating a lot of fat is not a good idea. But for the most part, the reason we get so fat, we're, we are the starving obese in this country is not the fat. It's the carbs, which get turned into fat, which get turned into triglycerides. Triglycerides are storage forms of carbs. It's how carbs get stored. That's so important to understand. It's the triglycerides that make us fat. The triglycerides are storage or ways that the body deals with all the freaking carbs that we're getting. It sticks them in fat. Now, there are two fats, two triglycerides, two unsaturated liquid triglycerides, which are unbelievably important. They're like vitamins. That's such an amazing concept. Yeah, we talk about fats all the time. Triglycerides, we specifically, we talk about these all the time in terms of our body weight, in terms of food, in terms of our blood work. We talk about these all the time. We, we're told to stay away from oils. We're told, uh, we're told to uh, avoid processed oils. We talk about fats all the time, but what we sometimes don't make a connection with is the fact that there are two fats, two triglycerides, two oils, if you will, that are so, so important. They are actually like vitamins. They are essential like vitamins. Of course, I'm talking about essential fatty acids, EFAs. That's what EFAs are. They're vitamin-like in the sense that you better get them in your body. And they are incredibly functional unbelievably fun functional. The best place to get your EFAs is going to be from food, but it's hard to get the amount that you need. That's why you supplement. Supplementation is not a great thing. It's a necessary thing. Supplementation is not the way the body's supposed to get nutrients, but it's necessary in our day and age, which is why people get dramatic benefits from EFAs. I have seen the most amazing things happen, especially to the skin, when, you, uh, when people take EFAs. And you can see this for yourself when you start to give your pet eggs. Give your dog, start to give your dog eggs, which are one of nature's best sources of omega-3 fats and omega-6 fats for that matter. Or, or just give your dog oils, a uh, good vegetable oil that's got uh, EFA-rich vegetable oil, not the cheap stuff that you buy at King Supers, but a good nutritional vegetable oil. The first thing you're going to notice about your animals is coat will become shiny. Well, guess what? When we do EFAs, our coat becomes shiny, meaning our skin and our hair. Our skin and our hair visibly and dramatically 
will uh, will exhibit a health benefit, will exhibit shininess and glowingness and health when you start using EFAs, just from a cosmetic purpose, for cosmetic reasoning, for a cosmetic uh, goal or a cosmetic benefit. EFAs are important. They're found in lots of foods, but that doesn't necessarily mean that we get what we need. And EFA deficiencies are, in my humble opinion, pretty darn common and also the cause of a lot of health misery. Major changes in how we uh, began to ingest EFAs began in the 1950s and 1960s. And this is because in the 1950s and 1960s, vegetable oil, unsaturated oils, vegetable oils, uh, our ingestion of them began to change. That's because we were under the illusion that we shouldn't be eating, we shouldn't be ingesting oil. The lipid hypothesis was kicking in. The lipid hypothesis, also known as the diet heart hypothesis. It started in the 1950s, late 1940s, early 1950s. It's when it started showing up in the research, this idea that maybe it was the fats that we're eating that were causing heart disease. They started to notice when people came home from World War II and from the Korean War, when young people came home from the war, when they did autopsies on the, on the bodies, when I, I mean, when their bodies came home from the war, they did autopsies, and uh, they noticed that uh, there was a lot of fat in their coronary arteries. So they said, hmm, what's something's going on here? What's all this fat doing in a 20-year-old kid in the coronary arteries? And they start to associate heart disease with this problem of, of accumulation of fat in the arteries. A guy named Ansel Keys, who is a pr uh, professor at the University of Minnesota, he, and by the way, uh, received lots of funding from the grain people, the cereal people who were, who were in Minnesota, Keebler and General Mills and all these grain companies and, and cereal companies. Uh, and they started to get this idea that, hmm, if there's fat in the arteries, maybe that means we're eating too much fat. So let's stop eating the fat. And this whole idea, this lipid hypothesis and eating less fat and, of course, be replacing with grains, replacing the calories with grains, started to kick in. The notion was that ingestion of saturated fat was behind the epidemic of heart disease. Heart disease really, heart disease, if you backtrack the history of heart disease, it really got going in the 1920s and 1930s. It was epidemic by the 1940s. And by the 1960s, people were totally freaking out. Nearly all, by the 1960s, nearly all cardiologists and professionals and government health organizations were, uh, were ripping on the fat and telling us that we had to go from the, the saturated fat, that is, not the vegetable fat, but the saturated fat, ripping on the saturated fat and saying we had to start eating more liquid vegetable oils and margarine and eating more carbs. So we had this low fat, this whole craziness, this low fat craziness began in the 1940s, really got going in the 1960s and 1970s and, and even into the 1980s. But 1990s, it started to fade. So it was about 50 years of this lipid, lipid hypothesis, this idea that we had to reduce our saturated fat intake and start eating more vegetable oils, liquid vegetable oils and more margarine and replacing our butter with margarine. And to this day, to this day, the American Heart Association recommends the use of margarine instead of butter. And not just any margarine, but the highly processed, ultra disgusting, soft margarine, fake margarine. It's not even, it's not even margarine, it's fake margarine. If you could have something like that, fake, a fake, fake food. All right, I'm Farmer Ben, 844 236 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back after this. On the bright side, I'm pharmacist Ben. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. Got lots of lines open. Eight four four two three. In fact, all our lines are open. Eight four four two three six sixty ten. If you have questions, comments, success story you'd like to share, or a health challenge, perhaps that you or a loved one may be dealing with. Eight four four two three six sixty ten is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended, go to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, or criticalhealthnews.com, or call. 866-735-2470, 866-735-2470 for more information. And don't forget to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Our number today, 844-236-6010. Reading from the Journal of Clinical Investigation, New ALS, Amyotropic Lateral Sclerosis which basically means your spine is 
becoming closed and hard and your nerves are getting inflamed. ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, around 20,000 people have Lou Gehrig's disease in this country. New ALS therapy and clinical trials. Drug extends survival, reverses some neuromuscular damage in animals. ALS is a horrible, absolutely vicious health, uh, health challenge. Stephen Hawking's had ALS. You've seen, if you've seen Stephen Hawking's, you know what it can ultimately do to you. It's just a terrible, terrible thing. They tell you uh, uh, 10% of, uh, a, according to this article anyway, this is published in the Journal of Clinical Investigation, July 16th, about 10% of ALS cases are inherited. And of those, uh, one-fifth are caused by a certain, well, let's just say 10% of ALS cases are inherited. What does that mean? It means 90% is not inherited. Now, I will tell you that uh, all of it is not inherited. And who cares if 10% or 90%? How do you know yours was inherited or yours wasn't? If somebody has ALS, you've got to treat the condition like you do any other health challenge. That is the most important concept and idea that we talk about here on the Bright Side is the diseases are generic. ALS is a generic inflammatory condition that happens to take place in the spine and the nerves. But it's the inflammatory condition that matters if you're really serious about reversing it. If you are, and I shouldn't say it that way, because if you have it, you're really serious about reversing it. But if you want to reverse it, you're not going to reverse it by going to the doctor. There's nothing the doctor can do. They can extend to survival. That's what they're, that, this is what they're left with. This is all they have in their bag of tricks is to extend survival, maybe, in clinical trials, they don't even know if it'll, they can extend survival. Is that what you want, is to extend your survival in a wheelchair with your body, where you can't move your body and all that's left is your eyes? To extend survival? Are you kidding me? With an inflammatory condition? Inflammatory condition means the body's inflaming. The body inflames because it's protecting. That's all you got to do is figure out what it's protecting from. That's it. Now, is that too simple? If, if you think it's too simple and you don't want to take advantage of that powerful idea of leveraging that powerful idea, idea to get better, well, it's on you. Because the best ideas are the simplest ideas. Because life at its very core is simple. It's basic. If you want to get into the minutia, it's not. The term for all that is complexity, by the way, where things are so simple, where things are complex at the top, but they're simple at the bottom. Think of a tree. The leaves are really complex. They're the, the way all the leaves interact and touch each other and all the stuff that's going on at the level of the leaf, if you try to dress it there, you're gonna, there's no way. But if you go to the root, it's simple. You go to the soil, it's simple. ALS, all chronic degenerative disease, go to the soil, go to the root. Inflammation, protection. What is the body protecting itself from? It protects itself from two different things. It protects itself from crap getting in, and it protects itself from the good stuff not. The, and that's really what health is about. It's the good stuff getting in and the bad stuff not. And disease is the bad stuff getting in and the good stuff not. Is that too simple? I hope you don't think it's too simple, because if you do, you're missing your power. You're not leveraging the body's God-given ability to heal itself. ALS, like all chronic degenerative diseases, is reversible because the body is always in healing mode underneath. Even when you're sick, it's in healing mode. Even when you have the worst case of cancer and the worst case of ALS, your body is still, has, is still healing all the time. It's just that the breakdown is happening faster than the buildup. The and anabolism, is, uh, the, the anabolism means building, anabolic means building, catabolism means breaking down. The anabolism is lagging behind the catabolism. It really is as simple as that, and it's so tragic to me. You know, it's like in the Bible, my people perish for lack of knowledge. It's so tragic to me that we have all of this power. Just like uh, when they train elephants, they train elephants by, when they're baby elephants, they put them in a, with a time their leg up to a little rope and then become big elephants. They don't know they can just pull the rope out with, with just a, a, a tiny little bit of energy. They can pull that rope out. They don't know it because they've been trained to believe they don't have power. If you put flies in a jar and keep the top on them, they keep bouncing off the top of the jar, they can't get out. Eventually, you can take the top off. They won't even try to get hit the top because they don't know they have power. We don't know we have power. And we're not told we have power. We're disempowered. The medical model disempowers us. 
all power structures, all institutions are not there to get institutions are not there to make us powerful. They're there to make them powerful. But we have the power. This is true across the board with government institutions, legal institutions, health institutions. Institution comes from the word static. Stasis, stay the same. Institutions want to stay the same. Institutions live forever. People don't. Institutions don't want to give up their power to the people, to the body. We as individuals have so much power, and this is a metaphor that holds true in all kinds of ways. All right, let's okay, one more, and then we'll get your phone calls. 844-236-6010. This is from the Journal of Environmental Psychology. The scent of coffee appears to boost performance in math. How do you like that? You don't even have to drink your coffee. You can smell your coffee. That's called aromatherapy. And I know I'm a pharmacist, and I'm a scientist, and I'm going to tell you this. Aromatherapy is scientific and real. It is not. Uh, it, it should not be only in the realm of uh, old New Age hippies. It's real deal science because the olfactory system is a powerful, uh, probably the most fundamental and powerful area of our brain. It's the oldest area of our brain. It's the most basic level of our brain, the olfactory system, the, our sensory, our, our smell sensory system. And you, we all know we subtly, if not super dramatically, feel better when we have certain, when we smell certain things. And we all know that we react with disgust, which is basically uh, a, uh, one of the ways that the body's stress system kicks in when we smell other, smell other things. Yeah, isn't it interesting how the scent of something can trigger an entire memory of a, an event that happened 150 years ago or 60 years ago or 100 years ago or however long ago? Even, even 100 years ago, just a scent of something can trigger a memory if you're, uh, from your childhood. The smell of apple pie, the smell of your mom, the smell of uh, some event. If, you have, if there's a smell and then there's a, a very uh, traumatic event that occurs and there's a certain smell there, every time you smell that smell, you're going to get the entire memory of that traumatic event. And now, according to uh, folks at the Journal of Environmental Psychology, drinking coffee or smelling coffee can boost your performance in math as well. All right, 844 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You know you can carry around a little vial of essential oils and can totally change your mood. Longevity's got a great line of essential oils. Call 866-735-2470 if you want more information. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back. Good morning. Hope you all having a great day. Great morning. 844-236-6010 is our number. I'm Pharmacist Ben, and we have one phone call, Diane, in Nebraska, and a lot of empty lines. So let's uh, see what Diane has to say. What's going on, Diane? Is this my friend Diane, who's always always giving me a hard time on Facebook? <laughs> is that I you? Don't, I, don't, I, don't do, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> oh, you don't? Okay. All right. Don't We're you, friends now? Huh? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Um, okay, good. Sure. Um I picked up a pamphlet at a uh, natural grocer the other day, and yeah. it told me, and it said in there that DE uh, could be a good supplementation for, which is diatomaceous earth, could be a good supplementation for um, uh, silica. Uh, diatomaceous, diatomaceous earth is a great supplement for a lot of things. <laughs> Diatomaceous uh -huh. earth is one of nature's best sup best unknown supplements. Do you, do you know what it is, diatomaceous earth? Have you heard of it? I mean, yeah. uh, have yeah. you looked uh, into I it? Use it? Yeah, I've used it. Okay. It, it's amazing stuff. And as far as silica goes, that's amazing stuff, too. Uh, diatomaceous earth does have some silica in it. It's a great source of uh, just general minerals. Um, and silica in particular, though, is so valuable. I personally would take silica by itself. Diatomaceous earth is about... I don't know, 80 or 90% silica, but I don't know if all of it is orthosilicic acid, which is the type of silica that you need to be absorbed. Do you know what I'm saying? I see. So diatomaceous, yeah. I don't know how much of the silica is actually bioavailable in diatomaceous earth. Uh, diatomaceous earth, really, it's, uh, it's real claim to fame is uh, as a source of, uh, as a detoxification element. It absorbs things. Right. It's, not really, it's not really nutritional. Right. I said it was nutritional. It's more like a detoxifier. Okay. It it kind of absorbs okay. toxins. 
And that's that absorb, absorptive property is largely a function of the silica. And that's why I don't know if the silica is actually absorbed in diatomaceous earth. You know what I'm okay. saying? So it's about that was my 80, question, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's used, diatomaceous earth is used in uh, like uh, kitty litter kind of thing. It absorbs right. odors. So it's a detoxifier. Right. It's absorption. It's used for filtration. It's an absorption kind of thing. If you want to get silica, though, silica is amazingly important, uh, even though there's not a lot of literature about it. And there's not even a lot of books about it, about silica. It, but uh -huh. I'm just talking about from my personal experience how incredible silica is for helping heal the skin or heal the body, but heal the skin too. And that's, uh, that's in the form of what's called orthosilicic acid. That's the absorbable kind of silica. And that's spelled O-R-T-H-O, orthosilicic, S-I-L-I-C-I-C, -I 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 orthosilicic acid. Um, okay. And there are supplements that you can get orthosilicic acid. Uh, and then also you can buy liquid orthosilicic acid, which is really the way to do it. You'll sometimes see horsetail as a source of silica. Uh, yeah. I'm not necessarily sure that uh, you're going to get your uh, good silica value out of horsetail. Topically, you're probably not going to get any uh, value. For, like in shampoo, you'll sometimes see horsetail in shampoo or in, clean, uh, in um, topical products for wrinkles. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not buying it. I think you want to go orthosilic, orthosilicic acid or maybe something called silica hydrate. Go ahead. Ben, how about... Uh uh, bamboo silica. Yeah, same deal. Same deal like horsetail. That's another good. That's another okay. plant source. Yeah, I don't know okay. necessarily that the silica is going to be bioavailable. Okay. I would use I would use Abkit A B K I T, which is a gel, yeah. a silica gel that's hydrated. Uh, there's a product called Mega Hydrate. Uh, that's another one that you might want to use. Uh, there's sometimes you'll see something called bio, there's these, I think it's called biosil, which is a liquid silica that you're a homeopathic type silica. I, I'm, I, that doesn't seem like a good nutritional source of silica for me. Uh, I, I would be looking at orthosilicic acid or, 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 or silica hydrate and I do it in supplements. That's my personal opinion, especially if you're looking for wrinkles right. for nails or looking to reduce wrinkles, redu reducing, right. to, uh, looking to, uh, uh, to, uh, build your nails or if you're recovering from surgery or for bones, maybe bone health, it's just amazingly important as a precipitating agent. It helps other nutrients and it helps other nutrients like calcium, especially work to harden things. It's, it's just a really phenomenal stuff. And I haven't read, I, I keep trying to find research on it and there's not a lot of research on it because I know personally in my life and in my patient's life, I've seen it work so dramatically, but there's not a lot of research on it. Okay. 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 And crystalline what silica, are... the kind of silica that's in, uh, that you'll find in, uh, in rocks and, and uh, quartz, et cetera, that can actually be, if you inhale that kind of silica, that can actually be toxic. toxic. There's a condition called silicosis. So uh, you want to you want to use a mega hydrate or uh, Abkit are my two favorite brands. Or you can buy if you can find it, orthosilicic powder and make your own make your own gel. I haven't been able to find that either. I, I've, I've been able to find it in pharmacies, but I haven't been able to find it over the counter. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, one more thing, if I don't yeah. if you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, Vitamin C, uh, will, if the mommy takes vitamin C, is she going to have uh, extra vitamin C or take extra vitamin C? Will she have extra vitamin C in her milk, breast milk? Yeah. Uh, she'll, no, the, the milk, it'll go in the milk first, probably. The mom gets it last. It goes into I the think. milk first. Yeah, for herself, there might be some extra for herself. Uh, okay. I would take, if I was nursing, I would take extra, or, you know, not, I wouldn't be nursing, but if I knew somebody was nursing, I would suggest <laughs> that they took, they took extra okay. vitamin C. All right. Okay. Thanks, Diane. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye. Okay. Uh, Chris in Florida. Good morning. What's going on? Good morning, Ben. Well, uh, the caller on uh, food grade diatomaceous earth, I'm glad she's uh, asking and, and using it. I use it myself every morning um, just as I I don't wake know that it's a source of silica, though, is it? It is. It is. And um, I. It's bioavailable? That. Is the silica, like you can get the silica out of it? It's not, it's not like absorbable in the form it's in, is it? It's not orthosilicic acid, I don't believe. Or maybe I'm, I, I might be wrong. Uh, I can't. Well, I can't say I've had a nutritional blood test to determine. But, okay. Uh, I see that my nails uh, don't have any white spots anymore. So. Did you notice uh, changes in your body when you started taking it? 
Oh, well, I just feel more alive and awake, uh, but I just wanted to make sure I give the one warning that uh, it also kills gut flora, so you want to supplement separately with probiotics and prebiotics. because Does it people... kill them or does it, uh, does it adsorb them, like magnetically attract them, or is it toxic to them? I don't know exactly the mechanism, uh, okay. but maybe it's mechanically. I know what you mean by adsorb or the, the Vander Walls forces, V-A-N-D-E-R-W-A-A-L-S. Wow, forces. Chris, Chris, <laughs> Get, go, let's go do some chemistry here. Are you a chemist? Yeah. Uh, no, no, I just a little tinkerer, I guess you could say. You know, okay, yeah, Van der Waals forces are just, for the listeners, just magnetic forces is enough to understand. Uh, adsorption AD is like what happens to a spun, to the, when, when something just gets stuck on to the top of a molecule as opposed to absorption where it goes all the way into the molecule. So at clays have an adsorption effect. And I think what you're talking about with the probiotic, with the bacteria, it's an adsorption effect, which makes sense. And that's why I don't know if the silica is bioavailable because it's more like a, like a a detoxifying kind of thing than it is a nutritionally available thing. The body can't really break it down and absorb it. You need to have that silica in a liquid, in a, a, a easily dissolvable form, and it's not easily dissolvable. I don't believe, I might be wrong on that, in diatomaceous earth. That's why it acts like a filter. So, uh, but I want to move on here, Chris. I want to get one more call. Is that okay? Or is everything, uh, anything else you want to add? Well, I, I think that uh, it might be killing the, the good flora because uh, mechanically, the same way it, it kills insects by clogging up their, their uh, breathing apparatus and okay. slicing up the exoskeleton. But I want to also warn that um, perhaps a, tox uh, a horse tail can be toxic. Uh, certain varieties are uh, it can, uh, has an enzyme, thiaminase, and toxic alkaloid, equistine, that depletes a thiamine uh, from the body and, and uh, other, other problems. I'll just uh, email you. I suppose. Uh, hey, I did not know any of that. That's all good information. I appreciate you telling me that. Thank you. Right. But it brings up, brings up a very important point, and that is that we have this, this soft and fuzzy feeling about herbs. But herbs are can be quite toxic, and they're medicinal. They're not nutritional. And I like herbs, and I, I work with herbs a lot, but we got to recognize that they're not like vitamins and minerals and essential nutrients. What they are is medicines, albeit not like drugs in the sense that they're super-duper toxic, and they, do, they're, they tend to be more well-rounded than drugs because they've got all kinds of balancing elements to them. So you may take horsetail for one uh, for, uh, to take advantage of one of the medicinals, one of the uh, toxic, if you will, uh, uh, compounds. But you have all of these surrounding entourage compounds that work with the one toxic compound, and that mitigates the toxicity and makes it a more effective medicine. Uh, so herbs aren't like drugs, drugs, but they still have that kind of pharmacological effect. And that's why I'm always talking about nutrition, and I don't really talk about herbs as much. So thanks for bringing that up, Chris. I didn't know that about a horsetail. And uh, that's all the time we have for today on The Bright Side. Thank you for listening. Please check out our websites, brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com for the longevity products, the Join the Team link that you can click on, as well as news stories and blog posts and videos. And then don't forget to check, check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Truthtreatments.com, thanks for listening to The Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. We'll talk to you all later. Bye for now. Thank you.